My name is Ade Bora. Uh, I live with my uh, wife Bandana in a town called Camarillo in California. And uh, we've been in California for a few years. Uh, it's a wonderful place. And I work as a program manager with Parker Hennepin, still employed. And uh, well, so far it's been a, a wonderful journey with my uh, work as, as well as my life here in California. Uh, but lately, for about a year, I'm in, on, on medical leave for my kidney uh, dialysis. And so my and the lifestyle is a little different than my professional lifetime now. Well, my uh, awareness of kidney uh, disease and involvement with kidney uh, problems and treatment is almost uh, 40 years old. I became a kidney donor at, at the age of 22 uh, and when I was just out of my graduate school. Uh, and then I learned about my brother getting um, chronically, uh, you know, disease that, which was undetected at that time. And by the time we found out, it was kind of too late and he was already in, on dialysis. As we were frantically looking for solutions and the kidney transplant was pretty new in India at that time. And as we learned more and more about it, and I was very eager to be his donor. And uh, so the donation took place in July of uh, 1977. Well, since then, um, you know, he has lived well. Unfortunately, uh, he passed away in 1995 for other co complications. Uh, and then uh, my own kidney problem really started more, more or less in around uh, end of 2000. Uh, when we realized that I have also been having some blood pressure that was not checked for a while. And it was uh, what we call as uh, chronic kidney disease where your efficiency of the kidney slowly declines over the years. So since then, you know, it's now 15 years that uh, I've managed without uh, any dialysis. I have, uh, you know, my kidney efficiency had gone down, but it was still quite manageable. And I had you know, almost more or less normal activities. I had my uh, profession going on full time and all other recreational work was there. Uh, but now is, I think, as a uh, the point has come where I think the dialysis would be a better choice. So I do peritoneal dialysis now. And April of last year, we started the uh, PD uh, when my kidney uh, GFR, which is kind of an uh, indicator for kidney efficiency, was at about uh, 12 to 13 percent. Uh, so when my kidney problem was detected in the uh, end of uh, you know 2000, uh, my GFR efficiency was around 50 percent. So from 50 percent to come to 12 percent, it took about 15 years, so it was a gradual, uh, you know, slow down. Uh, and I think now I'm, my kidney is still working, you know, partially, uh, but with the assistance of the dialysis is, is, uh, is so, so much better. The kidney, as some of you know, is a wonderful uh, organ and can compensate very well depending upon the demand of the system. And one kidney itself for Bonnie Albas is good enough. My kidney had enlarged to take up more capacity, uh, but I think unfortunately as the nephrons were dying, so that's why I think needed some more assistance in filtration. So the dialysis I'm doing uh, does the additional filtration that needs to be done. I do dialysis every day. Uh, peritoneal dialysis can be very much manually managed by your, you know, your team. Uh, but uh, I've become very knowledgeable about the process. Uh, my um, supplier is Fresenius. I have worked with their quality department and their research people also to kind of alter some of the things and make improvements on, on their system as well. Uh, so I have been on the transplant team as soon as we came to California. 
uh, which is about three, four years ago I had registered. That kind of gives me a lead edge of having at least uh, three years waiting time. Uh, UCLA or near Los Angeles, the waiting time is very long. Um, so as an alternative or plan B, I have also registered at Mayo Clinic in Phoenix, Arizona, where the uh, waiting seems to be shorter and thankfully I'm current in their list. So hopefully within this year I might get a call from them too. Someone who has this uh, problem needs to at least register in a couple of places, uh, whatever, whatever their insurance system would allow so that they have at least more than one, one option going on. Something to think about is that this process of becoming a kidney donor, as some, some people might think to be as simple or, uh, you know, given, is not so. You have to be in a definitely a very good health and because the donor uh, tests are very stringent, um, a living donor is not just accepted unless you are in more or less perfect condition. I know of many people in my family who tried to be do donor for my, um, uh, my, uh, my illness and they were unfortunately turned down. So if somebody is uh, kind of approved to be a donor, definitely the doctors have vetted out everything possible that could have gone wrong in any way. My problem was that I probably had this um, kidney disease similar to my brother and I would not have been a donor had, it, had I been going through tests in the present day. I w unfortunately, I would, I would not have been selected to be a donor. Uh, but in those days, 40 years ago, uh, the tests were not as rigorous, so you know, probably I passed through. Uh, but today's donors, they need to be aware that they will not be selected to be a donor unless they are thoroughly vetted out. The operation itself has become very simple nowadays. You know, I think um, this is something, uh, in a way, if you look at it, kidney disease is something which is not like cancer. Unfortunately, a lot of people uh, who are near, who near, where someone's near and dear one suffers from a cancer there's no solution out there. But kidney disease is something that if you have a transplant, there's definitely, you know, you're giving your loved ones another 10 years or even an, an, to a strange stranger that uh, you want to be an altruistic donor, you're affecting lives of somebody who completely gets a new lease on them, their life for another maybe 10, 15 years. Every situation in our lives, whether it's a challenge or any kind of hardship, brings us the, also the opportunity to learn from it. It opens up completely a new world. The kidney disease did open up many aspects of uh, my life. Uh, for one thing, I began to know much about my body itself, uh, how my organs are working, how many of the things that we take it for granted uh, we need to be careful what type of food I eat, uh, you know, my uh, daily well-being of my health and all that. that. That's one aspect I really become quite aware. Uh, the other aspect I become more aware spiritually. I got started thinking about the big picture, you know, how we all are connected in some way or other. And, but the other, other things also, it brought to me many other people uh, like you guys you know, who are so helpful in this. I have uh, through um, you know social media and other network through my friends and all that. I have I've known a lot of helpful people uh, that have come together. Some donors who have been on the similar journey. So I, I would say, you know, kidney disease is something that has really opened up my life and, and transformed my life for the better. Listen to music, uh, watch a good comedy show you know, watch a nice movie, you know, be among friends, don't get into too much of politics or anything. <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's not going to help either. You know, what you can see, there are life things you can do you can, and things you cannot do. Once you know that these are the things I can do to make a change, sure, go ahead and make the change. Having a sense of humor in life 
is very important. We shouldn't take life too seriously. You know, just enjoy the journey and then share what you can.